good afternoon and thank you for joining us again at the virtual ninth annual forensic science symposium. Uh, this is the lunch and learn poster session again hosted by the Global Forensic and Justice Center. Here's Mario's presentation uh, and he'll take questions as well uh, again using that chat function. Mario. Okay so I'll begin. So uh, thank you very much everyone for for your time for taking your time to to be here and hear my presentation. Um, I know this is a a different kind of, of of conference, but I know it will be we'll we will learn here. Uh, so uh, I will start with the presentation. I, if you have any questions, please let me know throughout the presentation, or or at the end you can you can ask me, and I, I will do my best to answer your questions that you put in the chat. So as as the host. Uh, said before this is going to be recorded and if you have any questions please let me know so i hope everyone can see the posters uh, so my name is mario mario vendrell dones i'm from puerto rico uh, I'm, I'm in my second year I, I just finished my second year here in rfiu uh, um my pi is bruce mccord and the title of my presentation is um the development of a, of a rapid reliable a method for the detection of synthetic cations. At the beginning, we be, uh, we, we we began to study these two these two analogs. Uh, but then, depending on the results that we we'll, that we will have, we will expand this list. So, due to the ongoing proliferation of illicit drugs in the drug market and how easy they can blend in, in the scene to stay on the authorities' radar. There is a constant problem in trying to develop methods that not only can quantitatively identify the drug, but also quantitatively measure them in cis drug and biological samples. In this case, synthetic cations are considered designing drugs since their chemical structure can be easily altered to produce new chemical entities with even more potent effects. So that's a very, very hard, uh, bad problem that authorities are, are trying to figure out because not only the, the drugs can be, can be easily altered, but we don't know the effects that these variations can can have and eventually harm the users. So the constant production of these new analogs makes the authorities' job even more harder in is to not only control them but also analyze the effects that the that this product has in society. And eventually, uh, since they don't have, since they don't know the the hazard that the, that these have, it can eventually uh, if if the if the if it's not controlled, the use it can even uh, produce over overdose. So the in aims to to understand this problem and try to figure out how we can solve it, we are trying to. There is a need to the de, to develop a screening method that not only can assist the authorities in identify the these substances in a rapid, sensitive, and in an in a in an inexpensive manner, but also uh, in in aims to do that, we we first um, want to figure out first in in want to identify these drugs in in solid sample, and then eventually we, we're gonna move on to to biological matrices. So the technique that we're using is a surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy, which which we know as search. and this technique is being used as the main technique of the project because of the weak signal that the Rama spectra produces. And then we search uh, this, this signal can be amplified in order to stay better and sensitive signals regarding the identification and quantification in, in, of drugs in various matrices. So the whole purpose of this, the, how this works is that the molecules being analyzed, the analytes, in this case, the synthetic cations are placed in nanometallic surfaces. And by the accumulations of those of the photonic energy that is caused by the oscillation of the electrons, this results in localized surface plasma resonances. This can produce a signal enhancements of various orders of magnitude, allowing up to single molecule detection. So the whole purpose is to, to place the to place the analyze in a in the in the in a surface in, in a metallic surfaces, and by the interaction of those electrons, those free electrons in the in the surface with the analyte, the um, then the 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 laser from the from the light source um, 
interacts with the, those electrons and that produces vibrations and those oscillations of those electrons are then gonna, gonna be uh, enhanced, gonna be transferred to the, to the analyte and that's how the, the signal can be enhanced. So, as I said before, uh, this can produce uh, enhancements of various uh, orders of magnitude, which can allow up to single molecule detection. So, as you can see, the first part of the project, we, we wanted to, to run computational uh, calculations using density functional theory, on, in other words, DFT. In order, in order to obtain the simulator, the simulator Raman spectra of both of the analogs, in which we're gonna name them 5ME and 4M and 4MEC, because the names are very are very long. So for abbreviation purposes, we those are the two names that we're gonna be using. So this Raman spectra will produce these different stretching bands, and those stretching bands are proportional to the masses of the analytes. DFT allowed us to assign the peaks of uh, of both analyzes using b 3 lib as a basic set. The normal spectra, which is the one that that we that is the solid the spectra of the, of the analyte, is the one that we that we use as the standard and then compare to the simulator spectra in order to assign the peaks and, and under specific molecular vibration. So the first part uh, we run computational simulations using b 3 lib uh, as a basic set. And as you can see on the table in the middle, uh, those, uh, those um, you can see first the DFT spectra uh, wave, uh, wave number, which is on the on the left, and then we compare it to the to the to the peak to the uh, solid sample. So in the case of of five me, uh, you can see on the first spectra on the right. Uh, I think that. Here, I don't know if you can see my cursor. The one on the spectra on the on the top is the solid spectra. This spectra was obtained using a using a, a benchtop uh, Raman, and then this one in the in the bottom is the simulated one. So after we laid up, we we at laid each of the each of the spectra on top of each other. Uh, we assign the peaks using uh, using a DFT in order to see, you know, not only assigning the peaks, like uh, which are the bonds that were moving, but also what were the specific movements that, the, the, the specific vibrational movements that those uh, bonds had. So, so as, as I said before, these are the, this is the simulated spectra from the, from the calculation, and then this is the, the solid spectra, which we compare in order to, to see how sensitive and how effective the calculation that we performed was. So that's why you see the DFT spectra, this is the simulated one, and the normal spectra, then, which is our standard, the solid, and then compared to see the percent of error. So we did that for both of the structures and we were able to, to assign many peaks for both of the analytes. So, after that, we performed search experiments uh, using previously developed, using a previously developed method by, by, by one of our members in our group, which, which we use a, a mixture of gold and silver nanoparticles, which we call nanostars due to their, due to their shape. And the spectral train was taken, as you can see here, this is the spectra where we vary the we vary the 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 pH uh, to determine in which in which pH was the uh, the analyte was neutral due to the presence of the amino group. So we were trying since we have an amino group in in a, in both of, of the structures, we know that the that both of the compounds are not neutral. So we we want to to see in which pH we can neutralize that that edge charge, so that's why we try to to we perform pH um, pH studies in order to see which was the best uh, spectra. 
So for both of the for the comp for both of the compounds, we determined that pH eight was the was best for the for for uh, was the selected pH for both um, analytes, and then this this solids the the solid sample, which is the normal rama for both of the structures, is is put on the on the top. We compared the the solid with the liquid, the search samples, as you can see in the bottom, and we asked we we were able to to assign the peaks. So in conclusion, uh, for both of the for both of the analytes, we were able to uh, assign the major peaks with a high level of confidence and accuracy. Uh, for both cases, it requires scaling in order to, since the DFT is a calculation, it doesn't take into consideration the, the real condition. So that's why we have to scale it. And for, as I said before, for both uh, compounds, pH 8 was the, was the best uh, pH range in which uh, we, could, um, we could assign the peaks and, and saw that the peaks were less broadened and more, and more um, uh, sharp. So in, in future work, obviously we want to, the, to repeat this, um, these experiments using the adventure Raman because the search experiments were, uh, were performed using a, a portable Raman. And also we want to explore other nano, nanomaterials like silver because, uh, to see if we can uh, improve our peak shape and then our uh, our main goal is to be able to to move these results to explore um, by bi biological matrices specifically or a fluid so if you have any questions please let me know I don't know. Um, I don't. Are there any questions in the chat? I don't see. <clears throat> Thank you, Mario, for that. Uh, again, the chat function is where we'll entertain those questions. So go ahead and please, uh, any questions you might have, go ahead and type those into the chat and uh, Mario will be able to see those and answer those for you. Mario, while everybody gathers up their thoughts and starts with their questions, um, you, you mentioned moving from the handheld Raman instrument to a benchtop instrument. Is there anything different that you foresee will change in the results based on the instrumentation? Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, the problem with the, with the portable Raman is that it's very automatically, so we are not able to to be able to um, uh, to change the parameter specifically uh, to to the like like as we can do with the um, with the uh, uh, with the um, with the bench to Raman. So as what we expect is that the the sensitivity and the shapes of the of the peak will be even better, so that will be enhanced. Also, the the Raman spectra that we have right now, the the handheld one, the portable one, it only has a one exciting wavelength, which is the red laser. With the with the port with the benchtop lasers that we have, the Raman, 
it has two lasers, so we are we are able to explore other nano uh, nanometallic uh, materials. That's why when we move that's, that those experiments to the bench to Raman, we were we are going to be able to explore uh, silver uh, nanospheres and and other shapes using uh, the using the the Raman using the green laser, which is the other which is the other um, exciting wavelength that we don't have in the uh, handheld instrument. Great, thank you. Um, as, as you talk about, again, future work, you mentioned um, blood or oral fluid. Is there a potential you see for this being used to counter um, persons operating under the influence of um, the illicit substances through potentially like using a portable ramen uh, for that oral fluid at a, you know, a roadside stop potentially? Is that um, something that you may see? Obviously, uh, greater results probably would come from the benchtop units and things like that, but um, is that something that was within the sphere of where you were looking as you undertook this research? Uh, at the moment, there's not a lot of information is like in to see if we can like the reason why we're doing we're doing synthetic cardinals is that there's not a lot of information regarding the biolegar samples. And since we want to to explore a biolegar sample that is very accessible, so that's why the one that we're gonna be focusing is or a fluid. So yes, like the our like one of the main purposes is to be able to to translate this uh, lab work into a into a small into a smaller scale or to to know, to to test this in the road or try to <clears throat> Thank you for that, Mario. I have noticed that um, kind of the, the participants have kind of come, I, I noticed new participants um, and some have, have left as well. So it may be um, valuable for the participants if you maybe again just kind of give a quick synopsis of the uh, the research that you did and uh, hopefully that will kind of stimulate some questions from these new folks that we have in. Uh, again it's kind of this very unique construct for posters so traditionally folks would kind of move amongst the posters um, and be able to to ask questions along the way um, but if you maybe kind of again give us that quick snapshot to to get uh, our new folks um, up to speed on your research real quick. That might help. Okay. So thank you very much for the ones that are still here trying um, and the ones that listened to me in the earlier presentation and the one that have come in. Thank you very much for, for being here again. Um, so the, the my project is about synthetic cardinals trying to develop, to develop a method, a, a different reliable and sensitive method and also rapid method in order to identified these drugs in a in at the beginning where now we're working with solid samples so the main the main problem with these samples with, with these compounds is that they are considered designer drugs so that means that they can be easily altered and this and since they are designer drugs this this makes the uh, the the way the, the authorities the drug and the the authorities uh, job even more difficult because it does it. They can they can change the their structures in various ways and alter their their different functional groups and and the problem with this is that they they the structure changes but also the the effects the 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 effects that they can have in their consumptions are also unknown. So what we're trying to do is that. We're trying to be able to not, not only identify these these samples in um, in their solid in their solid uh, state, but also try to uh, 
progress this this project in order to to move on to a bioligar sample. So the the technique that we were that we are using is surface enhanced transfer circuitry, in other words, search. So what uh, in simple ways, what we what, what we want to do is that the problem, the main problem we're using Raman spectroscopy is that the the signal that we, that is produced is very weak. So in order to enhance that signal, we use a, we use a, a nanometallic surface in which we place our analyze, and then by the interaction with the laser and the and the and those free electrons from the surface. Those, th this is gonna create some vibrations, and those oscillations of those of, of those electrons uh, begin to accumulate energy, and then this is transferred to those analysts that are near or in the surface. So that's how the the signal is enhanced through through um, many uh, uh, orders, and it can even uh, detect up to single molecule level. So the first part that we did is to is was to run uh, computational calculations uh, in order to to produce a um, a simulated spectra. So that's why that's why you can see in on this on this uh, spectra that this one in the bottom is the simulated spectra. So this is the one that we're gonna be expecting uh, from our from our real exam from our real experiment so here here in the top this one in the in the the blue spectra is the normal raman which is the solid sample so that solid sample is the one that we're going to be using as a as a standard and then with that we're going to be uh, assigning the peaks so that's what that's why you can that's what you see on the on the middle you see uh, the two tables in which we compare the, sim the simulated spectra, the DFT, with the solid sample, and then we assign the peaks on not only which bonds are moving, but how are they moving. And after that, we compare the different uh, wavelengths and, and determine the percent of error in order to determine if the calculation that we selected was, uh, was accurate or not. In both cases, it shows that it showed that it was accurate. So the because the person of error it wasn't like the highest one for both cases uh, was four percent. So in conclusion, we we were going no we were we were able to not only determine the the to not only assign the peaks but also uh, it was the the method that we selected was accurate enough to to determine the peaks. So after that, we perform a, it's the, our search experiments with a, with, the, with a mixture of uh, silver and gold uh, nanoparticles that were previously developed in our laboratory. We, uh, and the, and we, we varied the pH from four to 10 because in both cases we have the presence of an amine and that that leads to a for the charge of the whole molecule to not be neutral so we want to be able to to neutralize as much as we can that charge in order to detect, to detect the, the 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 analyte so uh, for both cases we concluded that ph8 as you can see here was the one that produced the sharper peak and and were less broadened so it, we we in for both cases after we select the pH eight, um, we compare it to the to the normal Raman to the solid sample for both cases, and then we assign and then we were able to assign at least I think I, there are like eight peaks there. So in conclusion, we were able to determine that first our 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 calculation was was uh, with a high level of accuracy. And then we were able to not only determine the, the peaks, but also we were able to identify the, the, the compounds that we were uh, analyzing. So for, the, for, our, for our future works, what we wanna do is that since the search experiments uh, were performed on a, uh, on a handheld Raman, we want to 
to be able to explore other um, other nanometallic um, materials. So what we want to do is that do these experiments and with the with a um, bench of Raman in only to change the the wavelength of the of the incident light because right now the 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 Raman that we're using only have the red the red laser so that limits us to only be able to work with gold uh, nanoparticles. So if we if we work with uh, with another uh, incident uh, Raman uh, instrument, we can work with the green laser and that green laser can lead us to work with uh with with other nanomaterials such as silver. So that's that's the one that we're gonna be focusing then to see if the green laser uh, using the the silver nanospheres can lead us to produce better results. And after that, we're gonna be increasing the our list of, of analyze. As at the moment we only have two. So after after that, we're gonna be increasing that list and then finally move on to um to move on to a biolegal sample but specifically oral fluid. So please, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll pose a question to you, Mario. Um, from your initial you know, design of the experiment and um, looking at your research, did did anything along the way really surprise you with the results or was much of what you um, found what you expected to find? The thing is that I, I, I have not only worked with synthetic catenons, I have also worked with other compounds such as uh, synthetic cannabinoids, heroin, cocaine, fentanyl. Uh, so the 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 results I I at least the ones with the for the PhD studies, I I thought it my like my like the results that I was expecting were obviously the ones that were closer to the normal Raman. So this this gets me thinking that we need to change a lot of uh, many parameters in only to to try to be as close as possible to a normal Raman. So that's why we want to to explore other nanomaterials in order to improve our peak shape. So like to answer the question that if, if the results that I was expecting were the ones that I that I like uh, got like it's like more or less because. Of course, I want to improve the pH story's peak shape, but in order to do that, I, I have to move my experiments to the bench top Raman. So, is it is it correct to say that the the variability in introduced by the the pH uh, was was probably more than you expected it to be initially? Mm, no, like the the variability in the pH, I, I wanted I wanted to see a more uh, like the peak shape to be more sharp and to see more peaks as the ones with the normal Raman with the solid samples. So apart apart from the from the pH uh, study like that parameter, we want to also uh, change all the parameters such as the aggregation agents because right now we're using magnesium chloride. So also the stabilizing agent and the and another parameter that we want to to change obviously is the the, nan, the nanomaterial, which in this case we're using a mixture of, of gold and and silver. But in order to we have seen in the in the in the literature that by using silver as a as the material of the nanoparticles, the picture is the peak shape is better. So in order to improve not only the peak shape, uh, in, in, in order to to have a better detection method, we need to change the, we need to explore other nanomaterials and the ones that we're leaning towards to is the silver nanospheres. So that's one of the main parameters that we have to change the, the nanomaterial that we're using in the, as the surface of the, of the, of the method. So that's our next step to to um, to run our experiments with silver nanospheres.
and then with that we have to uh, we have to change the the different parameters in order to depending on the analyze that we're using right now, which is the which are which are those two analogs. Great, thank you. So we have just about 15 minutes left uh, in this poster session today. Uh, so just a reminder to uh, to use that chat function for any questions uh, that you may have, and Mario will be able to see those and answer them for you. I'm not sure if you've noticed Mario, but um, Mallory uh, has just joined and was curious if she could get a quick summary of your research. Thank you, Mallory. Hi, Mallory. Hope you're fine. Hope you hope that you're fine. It's nice to. It's, I, I cannot say it's nice to see you again because I cannot. I cannot see you, but it's nice to hear you again. So, a quick summary of what I've been doing is that uh, I, I have been working with synthetic cadenons, and as you know, synthetic cadenons are designer drugs, and those designer drugs are very vary a lot in order to stay on the authorities radar but the main problem with these compounds is that since they are designer drugs they can be varied in many ways in this case it's like more than seven in seven ways that they can change so uh, the main problem with the authorities is not only to control them but also to 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 analyze and see what are the harmful effects that these drugs have like those variations that they can have in the in their consumers. The main problem with that is that there's not a lot of information with this because the since they vary so much, uh, the authorities cannot keep up with that. So what we're trying to see is that we want to develop a method that not only can identify these drugs but also can measure the concentration. <clears throat> So at first, uh, the techniques that we're using is surface enhanced ramal spectroscopy. In other words, SIRS. The main, the main, the main purpose of this technique is to be able to enhance the Raman signal that that the spectra produces, because that's the main that's the main um, disadvantage of, of of using Raman because the Raman signal that is produced is very weak. So by using a by using a nanometallic surface, in this case, it can be either gold, it can be silver, or many alloys. Um, by using that, we the interaction between the incident light, the laser between that and the and the nanometallic surface with the analyte on with the analyte on the surface, that's gonna that's gonna produce um, oscillation and those oscillations, those vibrations are gonna accumulate energy. So that energy is gonna be transferred then those electrons to the to the analytes that are within or near that surface. So that that en that en that's when uh, the enhancement of the signal is produced, and that is enhancement of the signal is it can then be detected up to single molecule level. So that so the enhancement is like is very high by by many orders of of magnitude. So first, the first thing that we did in our, in our experiments is to to run computational simulation in order to see which was the you know the spectra that we're gonna be expecting from the from these uh, compounds. So that's why you can see here on the top the blue, this blue. Um, I'm sorry, this red one. This is the simulated spectra. So after that, we in order to assign the peaks, we we need to to run a standard and the standard that we use is this is the is the solid form of the of the spectra. So after that we compare both of the spectra and assign the, the peaks for both spectra. So that's why you see that the uh, simulated spectra is on top of the the simulated spectra is here and then the normal Raman is here is the solid spectra and then we compare it to see how close the how well or how accurate is our was our calculation so that's why you can see here the simulated spectra wavelengths and the and the normal Raman's wavelengths which is the the solid sample after that we didn't, we did not only assign which bonds were moving but also how were they moving so that's why you can see the the greek symbols which means the different uh, movements that these bonds were having 
uh, due to a result of the of the interaction between the light and the and the compound. So uh, after that, we run a pH study in to, because the main one of the main important things so of our compounds is that it has this amine group in both of the struct in the structure. So the well, the main problem with this is that the whole the the whole charge of this of the compound is not neutral. So we want to see how can we change the pH and how can we neutralize that, that charge. So that's why we vary the pH from pH four to pH ten to see is by increasing the pH that charge can be neutralized. So in both cases, uh, we were able to conclude that the pH eight was the one that you can see here in purple was the one that produced the a less broadened pig and more sharper uh, pigs. So that's why we compare the that pH as you can see here the search sample at, at pH eight we compare to a normal Raman uh, which is the solid one and we were able to conclude that the that the um, not only that the calculation that we selected uh, had a high level of accuracy, but also that we were able to, that it gave us the information in order to identify the, the, the our compounds, our analytes. So in our, in, in future work, what we wanna do is that uh, the search the experiments that we perform in, the, in here, here, as you can see in the pH samples, uh, we're running using a, an automated um, Raman. So we want to do that with a with a bench to Raman in order to see if we can explore other nanometallic uh, materials. Because with the bench to Raman, with the uh, portable Raman, it limits us to only explore a uh, gold as a nanoparticle. So if we if, with the bench to Raman that we have. We can explore other or other nanomaterials such as um, such as silver, and then with that we can improve our peak shape. So after after year after improving our peak shape, we want to to not only uh, identify the our compounds with a more sense uh, with a like with a higher sensitivity rate. But also, we, we then want to move on to biological samples and specifically with oral fluid because first there's not a lot of information with oral fluid, and then uh, this is a, a biological matrix that is more accessible than others, and that's why we we want to use that um, we want to use that uh, biological matrix. So, if you have any questions, please please let me know. And thank you very much for for listening. So, by you, uh, when we move when we when we move on to to the biological sample using our fluid, the pH will depend also on the on our extraction method. So, uh, when we at the moment are, we're not right now we're not in the in the biological samples. But, but when we reach that point, uh, first we have to to see which is the pH in which, uh, like when we are trying, when we're developing the the extraction method, we have to select in, at which pH we have more more extraction of our analyte. So that will depend on the on our extraction method. So yes, it can like we it can change the the pH. Yeah, maybe it's not gonna be, it might not be pH 8. Maybe it can be even higher because not only the pH of the nanoparticles are the ones that are influenced by the, by the whole charge of the, of the, of the molecule, but also the aeration agent, which are the, the at the moment we're using magnesium chloride and also um, our stabilizing, which we're using uh, carbon, we're, I think we're using carbonate, yeah, sodium carbonate. So there are many, there are many parameters which influence the pH. It's not only the, 
the it's it, it, it's not only the the nanoparticles. There are there are many there are many parameters that can be influenced by that pH. So yes, it can it can change. Like the question that you're you're asking me is like why all why at pH eight the peak like was that high? What was that, that that is the question in comparison with the with the pH seven? No. So I think what Mallory's referring to is um, if you look at your um, comparison of the normal Raman spectra versus the spectra that you guys got. Um, so those top um, uh -huh. to the right a little bit, yeah. uh, that bottom of the top two charts, if you look at the, I believe it's the second peak in the, the lower yeah. spectra, uh, the, it reaches just, into the, the upper green spectra. Yeah. Uh, the, what we think of this is that since like the, P, the, the pH of the, um, like the, these peer studies were obtained, the, were, were obtained using a, as I said before, uh, a port tower Raman. But if we move on to a bench to Raman, we're gonna be able to have a, a higher level of sensitivity. So with that, we're gonna be able to see, to have a better peak shape and, and distinguishing between the peaks. So what this peak is, like this sharpness is, is the main, I, in my opinion, is the, is the, how you say the, are all those peaks together. So this has to do also with the sensitivity of the instrument that, we got, that we're using right now. So maybe the peaks are there, but the instrument is not capable of distinguishing those peaks. I hope that answered your question. We do just have about a moment left. Um, so I just wanted to thank everyone for stopping by. And uh, if you have any last minute questions, please go ahead and drop those in the chat. And then you can return back to that main webinar. Also like to thank Mario for uh, presenting this uh, very interesting research uh, and uh, the, the explanation to the many questions that we had. Um, so again, thank you and, uh, and look forward to, uh, to hearing about the, the future work in this topic. Thank you very much for your time and for all the questions we which are very which were very useful for me now to think and take uh, and keep studying for. So I appreciate for the time and and for being and for being here all this time uh, during my presentation and, and and for hosting the the meeting. Thank you very much.